Hello folks, welcome back to the 2003 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Retrospective. We're almost at the finish line here with just one video remaining past this one. Today we're talking about the final season of the series, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Back to the Sewer, which I always thought was called Back to the Sewers. I even said as much in the Season 3 video. Season 7, Back to the Sewers, just never came to DVD in the West at all. But I was wrong. Just figured I'd say that. Let's not waste any more time and dive into the history lesson. The year is 2008, and the Turtles are coming off of a successful 2007 because of the film TMNT releasing. Alongside its various amounts of merchandise and fast forward, season 6 of the show released its final episodes as well. Going into 2008, four kids had finally yielded and released season 5 as the lost episodes, so that drama was finally squared away. After that, we had to gear up for the next season. If you watched the last video, you would know that Fast Forward was going to get a second season to flesh out some interesting ideas, but the studios involved decided to scrap that and go off into a new direction for the next season, that being the biggest issue I had with Fast Forward in retrospect. It wasn't terrible, but it's really slow paced and doesn't really have much payoff because its second season got scrapped. From what I read, Mirage Studios, 4Kids, and Playmates Toys went through numerous pitches for what the next season would be about, and by about, I mean what crazy gimmick they'd do this time. Look, I get that TMNT has always been a toyetic brand. I mean, there's no other reason why ninjas drive around in a turtle-themed van or have sports gear or whatever besides merchandise, but when the very story we're telling is just doing whatever gimmick the three studios agree on, it makes it very hard to have faith the show's going to produce anything good because we just pivot in different directions whenever the returns aren't what the studio wanted. Which would be the core theme of this video. What they finally settled on was TMNT Back to the Sewer, a season that, from the name, sounds like it's going to be a return to form for the show since Fast Forward got fan backlash. Although that probably has more to do with leaving Season 4 on a cliffhanger and not giving us Season 5 than it does the actual quality of Season 6. I feel like the showrunners always cared about the fans, which is evident even going into this season, as they showed off a couple of different intros the season might use and let the fans vote on which one was their favorite. The one that got voted in has some really cool instrumentals you can hear in the background of the video right now. The rest were all pretty awful if you ask me. You can check out Leonardo 2003's video to hear them, I'll leave a link in the description. As I was saying, the showrunners cared about the fans and the series. I mean, just look at how excited they were to bring us Season 5. I'm just saying that by Season 7, the show was in a spot where its fate was tied to whatever the greedy ghouls wanted, which doesn't leave room for good storytelling since things will change in a season-to-season -season basis behind the scenes. The writers have to spend time planning out what stories they want to do with an idea, setting up plot lines for later episodes, and when those episodes just don't come, I guess we all lose. The fans and the creatives who actually make the show. A pretty visible example of the studio making choices that weren't natural would be the art design of Back to the Sewer. This season still has the same animation style as Fast Forward, but the character design has been massively overhauled. All of the heroes have been redesigned to look like how they did in the film TMNT. Now, why would they do that? TMNT is not even in the same continuity as the 2003 series. Well, toy companies don't really care about that sort of thing, it's brand synchronization that matters most. From 2002 to 2006, Playmates ran the figure line centering around the 2003 series, that being what the brand revolved around. In 2006, they shifted to the Fast Forward line, but then in the very next year, they had to shift to the TMNT figure line to coincide with the release of the film. Meaning the Fast Forward line was cut short, not releasing figures for characters like Triple Threat, President Bishop, or any number of the concepts Fast Forward had like the Turtle X armor. If this is only speculation on my part, I cannot confirm this, but since the TMNT movie figure line was running when they decided to scrap Fast Forward and do something else, I believe Playmates probably requested that the visual design of the next season be like the movie so that they can just continue the TMNT line and just use those existing sculpts while incorporating new things from Back to the Sewer. Just look at this image I found. It was promoting the new figures, reusing sculpts from the TMNT figures, only adapting them for Back to the Sewer. These never saw the light of day, but what did was the Mini Mutants figures in the late 2000s, these stealth suits debuting in Season 7. As I said, Playmates were requesting the art design be like TMNT so they could just reuse the sculpts they'd already made, it's just a theory on my end, but I honestly don't know what other reason there would be to do this. As for what effect this had on the show, all four turtles now have pupils in their eyes, this being the most off-putting thing about Season 7 for fans at a glance. I'd say you get used to it pretty fast, and it does give the artist the ability to express emotions with the character's eyes, but I'd say this wasn't really a problem before, so it's an ultimately unnecessary addition that makes the season really stick out like a sore thumb when compared to Fast Forward and Turtles Forever, let alone the first five seasons. Casey looks basically the same, but his outfits are designed like the movie. April looks the most different, going from being, well, 
this into uh, DCAU teen. Honestly hard to describe. She looks fine, but doesn't even look like the same character anymore. Splinter being my least favorite. His hair is still gray when it wasn't in the film, but the design just doesn't look right in 2D. The 3D modeling team behind TMNT gave him a basic silhouette, but filled in the details by making his hair visible on his face which is why the hair on Splinter before were lines that were drawn on the character. When you bring over the basic silhouette from 3D into a flat 2D style, it just looks like his hair is receding or something. And to show my support for Master Splinter, I decided to partner with Keeps to be the sponsor of today's video. Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. Two out of three guys will experience hair loss by the time they're 35, and Keeps offers clinically proven, research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair you have, Keeps is a brand to rely on as subscribers get 24-7 support with a network of medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to help you in achieving your goals. As Keeps' physicians will help you select the right products and treatments for your specific condition and hair goals. Each plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging so you can always have your questions answered. Some before and after shots are on the screen right now, as most Keeps customers notice results within six months of starting treatment. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Jay's Reviews or click the link in the description. That's keeps.com slash Jay's Reviews. I was just saying I was doing this to support Master Splinter and just hear what he has to say. It was wonderful. My hair has never felt so full-bodied and supple. Now having said that, let's get back to the show. I said last week that Fast Forward and TMNT made me a big fan of the Turtles, but despite being excited for Season 7 since it was back to basics, I never saw Season 7 as it aired. I caught a few glimpses of it, like I remember Mikey falling in this pit in the episode Web Wranglers, and I remember the look of cyberspace, but I didn't watch the episodes because the network had changed. 4Kids used to be a programming block on Fox. It used to be called the Fox Box back when the 2003 series started. Apparently, 4Kids failed to pay for their least time on the network, and while simultaneously having the time slot for Kids WB that was on the CW network sold to them, and thus, the CW 4Kids was born. I didn't know that back in 2008, so I missed out on a lot of Back to the Sewer. At the time, and to this day, Season 7 isn't held in very high regard, and that's probably putting it lightly. Fast forward, just by looking at the comments of the last video, still has fans or people who enjoy it or tolerate it or somewhere in between. But a frequent notion in said comments was that this season was the one where the show truly died. I've hated it for years, and went into this video expecting to hate it. Spoiler alert, I ultimately felt the same way about this one as I did Fast Forward. But enough preamble. What are we dealing with here? Episode 1, Tempest Fugit, begins in 2105 as Donatello and Cody have finished the time window. Since Cody looks older, I guess we can assume that many of the open plot threads at the end of Fast Forward have been dealt with. But there's no way to know for sure. Although speaking of time travel, I was thinking about something while editing the Fast Forward video. The Turtles are trapped in 2105, but I'm thinking, what's stopping them from trying to contact Lord Simultaneous and using the Time Scepter to go home? Wouldn't he know about this temporal anomaly? I know that means the season doesn't happen, but it was something I noticed. There were a couple other time travel inconsistencies I thought of while editing that video, but let's stay on subject. In the second to last episode of Fast Forward, Shokanabo was defeated and Viral, the villain that is a living computer virus, also got defeated with a decompiler beam that Cody developed. Coincidentally, she's revived right at the moment of the Turtles and Splinter saying their goodbyes to Cody and Serling. She uses this chance to hack Serling and destroy the time window while the Turtles are in it, sending them to a bunch of different places throughout history. The last one being this time in the near future, uh... The near future of the present timeline where the Utram Shredder, the Demon Shredder, and some new Shredder are in an all-out rumble over who gets to kill the Turtles. How Demon Shredder doesn't just kick everyone's ass with his... Demon powers is beyond me, but Utram Shredder is holding his own against him, but seemingly can't against the Turtles still. Don't ask. The decompiler is used on Viral again, but this time she hacks Serling to the point where she fires the decompiler at Master Splinter, who then scatters into a million data bits across cyberspace. So now, the main plot of the season is that the Turtles will have to venture into cyberspace to rescue the data bits and bring back Master Splinter. And Serling is back with them too. Viral is trapped inside the internet at the end, and finds a secret data vault that belongs to the Foot. When she tries hacking it, she becomes the new body for the Shredder. Thus setting up the status quo for Back to the Sewer. The Turtles need to get into cyberspace, and the Shredder needs to escape. Overall, this episode's pretty unremarkable. It just serves to set up the season, but I'll tell you this. I love how, since we start in 2105, the episode plays the fast-forward intro at the beginning, 
and at the end is the intro for Back to the Sewer that plays in the following 12 episodes. I like attention to detail, so I figured I'd mention that. When getting into the meat of the season, I think one thing's pretty clear. There are way too many different ideas going on at once. The very idea of a return to normal seasons of this show doesn't really compute with me. For one, I don't know what a normal season of this series even looks like. Every season's very distinct from one another. I guess it means the style of story from seasons 1 through 4, but in that case, it still doesn't work. You can make the tone the same, but the issue is what stories do you tell? The Utram Shredder's gone, the Triceratons are peaceful, the Federation was defeated, the Damio's son is a kid now, Draco was destroyed, Savanti's gone, Karai has given up being the Shredder, and the Demon Shredder was killed. For villains who are alive, a problem introduced by a present day follow-up to Fast Forward is that it would become pretty pointless to do more episodes about Agent Bishop, for example, because we already know how his story ends, so bringing him back would ultimately be pointless. Episode 5, Hacking Stockman, is a perfect example of this. We know how Stockman's story ends, so while Hacking Stockman is a good episode, his story has been wrapped up, so there isn't much of a point to doing the same old thing again. And wait a minute, how is Stockman working for Hun now? At the end of Season 5, we saw that Bishop was still going to force Stockman to work for him, and then, in Season 6, we got told he was still doing that in 2050. What happened here? Paid leave? But I'll say this, Cyber Shredder hacking Stockman leads to a moment I really laughed at. Had I known you were capable of such fine work, Stockman, I would have treated you better! Really? No! Point is, with every major villain faction from seasons 1 through 5 having their stories wrapped up, it doesn't really leave much room for the turtles to fight anything besides the purple dragons for a few episodes, some foot loyalists in the other episodes, although they don't have the Saki funds anymore since Karai is done, so yeah, that's not great either. So what they did settle on was this Cyber Shredder plot. It's revealed in Episode 3 that at some point, Terrell decided to back his brain up into the internet and viral interfacing with it gave him this body. Does this not sound like it's... reaching? Before I even think about it, I must point out how changing the animation style really exposed the footage reuse thing. Look at this part. We cut from direct. Shameless footage from A Rogue in the House Part 1, and then the frame just shifts to a completely different room and design for both Karai and Cherell. And wait. The shot before is the foot building from Season 1, but this shot from Season 2 they stole was on a boat. Nitpicks, I know. But what else am I supposed to say about an exposition dump for a plotline like this? Terrell being brought back with something Fast Forward Season 2 was gonna do, but there, his body being found on the asteroid is at least something you can buy, especially if it's 100 years in the future. But this solution to bringing him back just leaves me thinking we were desperate for a main villain, especially because Sho Kanabo, the main villain of the only season without a shredder, didn't really work out. However, the dead main villain having backed up his data onto the internet is about as forced as you can get. He's also an over-the-top goofball now. It's why I laugh at that Stockman bit so much. I liked how Demon Shredder had more of a comedic element to him, contrasted with Utram Shredder who was always very serious. But now we just have this digital version of Utram Shredder always feeling goofy. Perhaps it's the design, but I think it's the dialogue. I already showed an example, but then there's the fact that the writers gave the Shredder an obsession with calling his foes... Worms. Your doom is at hand, Worms! Your doom is at hand, Worms! <laughs> I'm more baffled by this than It's Ninja Time from Fast Forward. Legit, where did this trait come from? He never once used the word worm in seasons 1 through 3, and his appearances in season 4. Or season 6 for that matter. Not even the literal worms that brought him back to life. Those were biocytes. Well over half the episodes revolve around Shredder trying to get into the real world, and failing, and screaming, and laughing, and all that routine stuff. It's... It's just coming off lame. I can only say the same thing so many times. The show was just really running dry when it comes to main plot ideas, so Season 7 comes off really cluttered with different concepts that don't stick. First, we have the new Shredder which I talked about, these episodes being the cyberspace ones, and they're also about the new faction of the Foot Clan run by a new villain, Khan. He's got no personality, but I think he's a former Foot Elite member if only because the theme plays when he's on screen, and the Foot Elite ran the Foot Clan when the Shredder was gone in Season 2, so... that's something. Then there are episodes based around the Purple Dragons, others around Casey and April, and Serling's in this season as well. Honestly, since he barely does anything all season, I feel like they brought him back for the sole purpose of the episode of the Incredible Shrinking Serling, where Serling gets sent back to when the Turtles were kids. This was going to be an episode of Fast Forward Season 2, but they repackaged the idea as a Back to the Sewers episode. See, I called it Back to the Sewers again. That just sounds more natural than Back to the Sewer to me, what can I say? 
Back to the Sewer has variety, but I can't get into it because the main plot is dull and the stuff in between like Mind Controlled Casey for an episode, Mind Controlled Turtles for an episode, a nightmare world created by the foot where Casey and April die. Wait, didn't we do this episode in season 4? The weakest part about this season for me being the character arc they try pulling with Donatello. On the surface, this could have been pretty interesting. Looking back, Donatello is the turtle with the least amount of development in the whole show. Leonardo is basically the main character of the series, having been emotionally connected to the big storylines of each season. Raphael having episodes dedicated to exploring his personality, and Michelangelo getting episodes showing he's more capable than we realize. Don, by comparison, is in the show a lot, and the driving turtle of many episodes, but just never had much development as a character. The time he got turned into a monster being used to explore what the other characters do without him, rather than saying anything about him specifically. The smart one just kinda needs to be on top of things for the show to work, so that explains that. Season 7 sees Don witness Splinter get turned into data bits at the beginning and blames himself for it as he obsesses over his cyber portal and his mission to retrieve the bits. I think that is a good idea, but in execution it's just not as good as what happened with Leo at the start of Season 4. There, we see a gradual descent into depression and obsessive anxiety and it worked really well. But here, once he starts thinking he failed at the end of episode 1, a light switch is hit and he's now hyper obsessed. And then learns to stop being that way by the end of episode 5. And is then fine for the rest of the season. It's... just lame. Having said that, like fast forward, I still ended up enjoying my time with the season more than I thought I would. To be fair, my expectations were set at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, but like I said last week, it's more content with my favorite incarnation of the TMNT, so even if I don't think it needed to exist, and I also don't think it works in a fundamental level, I'm glad I got to watch it again. For example, the episode's existence is probably the only reason Serling is in this season, but hey, his having to deal with the toddler turtles was entertaining. Another episode I liked was the online event, Mayhem from Mutant Island. This was a multi-part miniseries released online with the Back to the Sewers art style. Webisodes for this show are nothing new, but this was the first one that was meant to feel like a real episode as the turtles fight dinosaurs from Dr. Stockman. Nothing special about it, just a side adventure for the turtles. Fun fact, this was later aired as a full episode, and this airing was the last bit of 2003 content released, dropping in 2010. But back to the main show, Super Quest was a really boring and cringy episode. I thought the Gaminator from Season 6 was bad enough, but then we have this episode where the turtles have to play an MMO to gather some Splinter data bits. And we get every 2008 MMO joke in the book. Stupid video game? Dude, this is Super Quest, the greatest massive multiplayer online role-playing game ever! But I gotta be honest, the episode made up for it with what I thought was the most unexpected comedic gag in the whole show, when the troll they were playing with was Hun. That's right, I'm a hardcore gamer. Have been for years! Hun was pretty good in this season in general. Right off the bat, they established that he told everyone that the reason the turtles were gone was because he finished them off and looks like an idiot when they come back. It's a good scene. Helps that Hun's original voice from seasons 1 through 4 is back to play him. For whatever reason, it was Bishop's actor who portrayed Hun in his brief appearances in seasons 5 and 6. One of the narratives I really like in this season was that Casey finally proposes to April as the wedding is the final episode. Casey also got an upgrade this season. He used to be a good fighter, but did not have the skills that the Turtles, Splinter, and later April did. He got training and now can pull off some ninja moves himself, which I thought was pretty cool. But that's really all I can give back to the sewer when it comes to compliments. It's not awful. It's just got too many ideas and not many of them are that interesting. Feeling really been there, done that by this point. Like Fast Forward, the season was supposed to get a follow-up to explore some cool ideas. Remember that Shredder War from Episode 1? That was supposed to be the main conflict of Season 8. But Season 8 doesn't exist. To take it back to the top, it's hard to be interested in what these seasons are going for since they flipped the script on a dime like this. However, unlike Fast Forward, Back to the Sewer does at least end on a memorable note. Wedding Bells and Bites, the final episode of the show. Splinter's data bits have all been collected, and he's brought back as he, the Turtles, and Serling meet Casey and April at the farmhouse to celebrate the wedding. And they went all out with making this feel like a celebration of the show's history. The wedding attendance is almost every side character in the show. Leatherhead, Angel, the Utroms, particularly Mr. Mortu, the Professors of both human and fugitoid variety, Cry and Dr. Chaplin, Casey's mother from Season 3, Casey's cousin from Season 4, the Ancient One, Usagi, Gen, the Justice Force, the Ninja Tribunal, and the other four acolytes from Season 5. It's a stacked roster. Of course, Cyber Shredder and the Foot crash the party with an all-out brawl between the heroes and villains. If this episode was a two-parter, I think it would have been interesting to see some character dynamics come back. I mean, this concept raises a lot of questions, like, 
What does Karai think about Cherell's digital copy being back? How does the Tribunal feel finally helping fight Cherell? Why doesn't Cyber Shredder care about the Utrams? Mortu is here. Wasn't killing them his goal when he was alive? Do the other four acolytes finally know what a Shredder is? These kinds of things aren't really addressed here because it's more of a cameo collection, which is perfectly fine. When the day is saved, we see the actual wedding. And even the Rat King is here watching. Bishop is watching on a screen. The Damio and his son are watching. Renette time traveled with the Time Scepter to watch. And speaking of time travel, Cody is also watching with the Time Window. Like I said, it's a nice love letter to the entire series, as two of its main characters finally get married. A long time coming, I'd say. But that's all there really is to say about Back to the Sewer. It's not bad, has a lot of moments I enjoyed, but it was overall something I felt lukewarm about. Just like Fast Forward. I feel like the studio and toy company changing directions on a whim was a massive problem for this show, but as I established last week, I think this show's death was a slow process, not something Fast Forward or even Back to the Sewer had done in particular. By this point, diminishing returns had hit the series hard. When talking about the biggest kids franchises from the early 2000s, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are bound to be on the list, but by the late 2000s, I don't know. Kids grew up, and younger kids watch other stuff. TMNT was a hit, but that did not transfer to Back to the Sewer. No matter what they did or didn't do with it to change the tone or otherwise, you can't stop the fact that other stuff got more popular around the time of Season 4's ending. This seems to be a uniquely Ninja Turtles problem, because this story should sound very familiar. The TMNT debuted, soar in popularity, kids love it, but then a few years later, other stuff gets more popular, so the studio pivots towards a new direction to desperately hold on to the audience. The classic series went through the same arc, only they pivoted towards a darker direction from the lighthearted roots of the show, and this series pivoted towards lightheartedness after its serious tone. But in both cases, it just wasn't enough to keep people around. This has happened three times now. Only Nickelodeon didn't keep the 2012 Turtles around long enough to die a slow death or pivot the tone for a few extra seasons. They made a new show that failed to gain an audience. I don't know why the TMNT don't have the absolute staying power that Superman, Batman, or Spider-Man have, but it's an observable issue with the brand's longevity. Everyone knows who they are, but each reboot seems to lose steam as it goes on. Maybe it's because people don't like the cosmic, supernatural direction TMNT always goes in, if my comments are anything to go by. And let me tell you something, that stuff just is TMNT. Street level stuff is how it starts, but it's always meant to go in those weirder ideas because that's been the brand's DNA since the very beginning. But perhaps that aspect of it just doesn't click with the audience. Whatever it is, I'm not sure. But the 2003 series was hit with the same diminishing returns as the original show. So we have these two seasons at the end that don't feel very needed, feel very much like pandering in different directions to try and rebuild the audience, when I put that aside, I feel like both are an okay watch if you liked the first five seasons. Maybe you won't come back to them, but the good moments are worth experiencing, I'd say. Especially the last episode of Back to the Sewer, the last episode of the show, where the team showed that they cared about the fans and cared about the show. And if that's still there, how much can I really complain? Now, I know everyone's wondering, is the retrospective over now? To that I say, of course not. This was created to be the definitive retrospective on the show, on this whole era of Ninja Turtles, so... I'll see you next week for the conclusion of the 2003 TMNT retrospective with Turtles Forever. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.